Hey there, and welcome back to RimWorld. My name is Pete, and after a short holiday break, today we complete another episode of our RimWorld series in the Cold Bog with the Cult of Jinx. Last time we left off after securing the help of Coco, who joined our colony of Liviana as part of a small quest, and whose usefulness has been mixed so far. We are also still in the process of converting Thoraya to the Cult of Jinx, but for the moment let's remain focused on Coco. After causing both Spex and Maniac food poisoning in the last episode, I think it is time we put her true intentions to the test, and we can actually do that right here and now by sending her out on a mission. The Empire needs a guide to help them explore a swamp, and in exchange they offer a Masterwork Great Bow, a fantastic reward at this stage in the game. So, only a few days after joining us, Coco can take the Imperial Shuttle and leave again. She will hopefully return in seven days, but until then we are once again down to only Maniac and Spex. Now, on the bright side, our reward is delivered immediately, so let's bring it into safety right away. Following that, Spex can start pruning the Garanlin tree, and we can also take a quick look at her current stats, after I learned during last week's AMA that a good number of you guys would like to see that a bit more often, so I will try to show off how our colonists are developing more frequently. With a plan skill of 7, Spex is certainly progressing nicely, although the new Great Bow still goes to Maniac and his double passion shooting skill of 8, one level higher than Spex's. He can also put his mining proficiency to good use and once again slightly expand our small hillside shelter, although this could very well be our last episode before we start to construct something new deeper in the woods. If you have suggestions for that, some rooms you would like to see for example, or an overall layout that intrigues you, then please let me know in the comments and I will attempt to incorporate some of your ideas wherever possible. Now, Thoraya's conversion process is of course also still going strong, her belief in her own ideology is down to 42% right now, with another talk from Spex able to reduce that to 37. So we still have a bit of a way to go, but we are getting closer to our goal. In the evening then the usual meditation, this time though not surrounded by that much anima grass, as all 20 patches were consumed in the last episode as we unlocked the first rank of psychic abilities for Spex. But we are of course nowhere near satisfied with that, so the nightly meditations will continue for the foreseeable future. For today though, we can move our wood stockpile into the slightly expanded shelter to protect the wood from deteriorating outside, and then send both of our colonists off to bed. On the next morning then, Maniac starts his day with cooking and research, because we still have not yet unlocked the secrets of complex clothing, and winter is almost halfway over. The rapid progression of time spent in the cold bog does have its positives as well though, because we are finally ready to share some muffalo wool off of our muffalo shadow mage. And so, while Thoraya's certainty in her beliefs drops down to 30% and our two woodmaker dryads Kipsor and Mixie produce the next batch of wood, Maniac can acquire 120 units of cozy warm muffalo wool, enough to gain his first experience points in the animal skill, which he started with at level 4. For the moment though, we can't do much with the new material, so let's put Maniac back at the research bench. Right in that moment, Randy Random also grants Maniac the benefits of a Psychic Soothe, unfortunately only affecting him as the only male member of Liviana, but Spex's mood is fairly high anyway, and Thoraya… well, we actually still want her to be as depressed as possible, so this works very much in our favor. To spark a bit more long-term joy, however, Spex can use some of our wood to construct a game board, moving her construction skill of 3 in the right direction and offering a bit more recreational variety to our colonists. After the evening's meditation then, not only do we have a gentle snow setting in, but we can also spot a buck passing by our anima tree, giving us a perfect chance to test out Maniac's new great bow. And it looks like the new weaponry is paying off, as we land a couple of hits that should prove to be fatal in just a few hours. Enough time, unfortunately, for the bug to wander off to the opposite end of the map, so perhaps we should have been a bit more persistent. 
In the past, this strategy has allowed us to save a decent amount of time, but it seems that with our hunters becoming more and more competent and increasingly well equipped, we might want to change strategies. On the following morning then, we can witness another reduction in Tharaya's beliefs, collect the dead buck from its final resting place, and also catch another one passing by our base. And this time, Maniac takes aim and kills it in one shot. So yeah, that's a masterwork greatbow at work for you, a reward that seems to have come at just the right time. By the way, you may have noticed it, our two dryads have once again spawned some wood, even though they already did so on the day before and they are supposed to only drop wood every two days. I am not entirely sure whether or not this is a bug or perhaps caused by our tree connection meme, I did check the last few patch notes and could not find anything related to this, and the dryad's description also still speaks of a two day cooldown, but it seems like in reality the time it takes down twice as fast. I'll leave a bit more technical info in the comments down below for those of you who feel like diving into this, but if you have experienced this as well, then please let me know if this is something that I should fix, as I don't want to give us an unintended advantage. Randy, however, seems to be in a giving mood today, as we have some cargo pods crashed down, and inside of them 73 units of Nutramine. As this is needed to make medicine, and since we have plenty of the also required herbal medicine growing on the map, this is a nice drop, even though we are of course still quite a few days away from being able to make our own proper medicine. In the meantime, we discover another logging camp not too far away from our base, and we did actually already let one of those pass us by, but there is still a second one, so it appears as if the game spawns them with enough frequency for us to always have something to raid, should we eventually have enough colonists to do so. For the time being, Spex and Maniac have their hands full keeping the colony running, but of course they can make some time for the evening's meditation. On the next morning, Spex reduces Thoraya's belief down to only 19%, so we are just a few more attempts away from finally welcoming the third member into the Cult of Jinx. Actually recruiting her to rejoin the colony meanwhile, that is going to be an entirely different story, and one that we'll have to wait a little while longer, because just as we are about to place a small nature shrine, a polar bear starts hunting specks. We also get our unintended daily dose of wood, one reason for building the somewhat expensive shrine in the first place, and can now see our two colonists in action against a proper enemy. However, the combined power of Spex's psychic burden ability and our two bows leave me confident that we should be able to handle this without issues. And indeed, after a bit of kiting, the polar bear goes down, Spex can continue with the construction work and Maniac can put the animal out of its misery. Another conversion attempt follows and we can see that Spex is getting closer to level 3 in the social skill, however, for now at least, her persuasion powers are still somewhat limited. Maniac, meanwhile, has indeed made it to level 3 in the intellectual skill, also far from being a professional, but perhaps providing us with just a few extra research points here and there to get us closer to the completion of our first research project. Our construction project, meanwhile, does not quite get done before the next meditation, but that's okay, Specs can simply go back to work on the following morning. After a few more hours, the shrine is then finished, providing the anima tree with a small 1% bonus to meditation strength, meaning that psychically gifted colonists like Spex who meditate at the tree will gain Psy Focus, the game's equivalent of a mana bar if you will, at a slightly faster rate. A 1% increase is certainly nothing crazy, but we can construct up to 4 of these shrines for a total gain of 4%, and while the difference between a baseline 28 and the max of 32% is still not huge, down the line it might be enough to save us an hour of meditation here and there. Thoraya, meanwhile, who is still on a steady diet of kibble by the way, sees her certainty dwindle fast as we are now down to the single digits, so most likely it will take us only two more tries until we have her converted. One more thing that we can also check at this point are the social relations in our colony, and we can see here that Spex and Maniac are actually not getting along too well. 
They are not yet enemies by any means, but they have exchanged a few not-so-kind words here and there, and with Spex's bloodlust trait, we might eventually see them square off. Maniac and Thoraya, on the other hand, seem to get along just fine, and maybe even more than that, but I guess those pursuits will have to wait until Thoraya comes back out of jail. The evening's meditation then takes us up to eight patches of anima grass, so we are making quick progress towards our next Psy rank for Specs, or towards unlocking psychic abilities for someone else. But I think we'll make that decision when we get there, likely in the next episode. Until then, we can use the psychic abilities that we already have to recharge our solar pinholes, with the one inside of our jail actually being enough to keep the place at a cozy 20 degrees Celsius or 68 degrees Fahrenheit. For the next episode, I might actually install the Fahrenheit and Celsius mod, so that temperatures, which have been a relatively large part of the challenge so far, are a bit more intuitive for everyone. On the following morning then, it's finally time for some action. Liviana is being attacked. I believe this is our first encounter with pirates, who in theory have access to much better equipment than us, but these two only come with melee weapons and a few minor injuries, so we should be able to take them. Once again, Spex's Burden ability works to our advantage here, allowing us to slow down the enemy's approach and to focus our fire on one at a time, and with great success. With enemy number two here, I then actually played things a little bit more risky than necessary, but they were already injured, and in the end Spex gets away unharmed. Both attackers, meanwhile, were killed, resulting in the corresponding mood bonuses for Specs, while Maniac has also improved his shooting skill to level 9. After the fight, what was planned to be the final conversion attempt then doesn't quite get things done, as Thoraya is left with only a single percentage point of conviction, so the Cult of Jinx will remain at two members for one more night. After the evening's meditation, we can now bury our two attackers, and with Thoraya staying up late, we can actually get our next conversion talk in right around midnight. And finally, we have done it. Thoraya has been converted to the Cult of Jinx. The next step will now be to actually recruit her. As you remember, we captured her in the process of leaving the colony. And that could take some time as well, as we need to reduce her resistance first. And again, Specs is not exactly what I would call convincing. Now, on the next morning, Maniac can bring back a dead muffalo, the result of a nightly predator attack, and while he's here, he might as well hunt another Ibex as well. Back in the base, Spex and Thoraya have the first chat about joining the colony, with little success, but still, at this point, we no longer need to suppress Thoraya's mood, so she can have back her bedroll. Keeping her mood high will now allow us to quickly build up her belief in the Cult of Jinx, which is also why we are switching her diet from kibble back to regular meals. As Maniac once again ventures out to collect the dead Ibex, a local elk goes mad and starts charging for the colony, but as it arrives, our two hunters are already waiting, and against both of them, the animal does not stand a chance. Since we're having a bit too much meat right now, we are also not butchering the elk right away, but at the same time, Maniac can collect a bit more shooting experience in the evening by hunting a raccoon. After exchanging a few more harsh words, the two of them then begin to meditate, and their efforts are enough to sprout anima grass patch number 11, and then it's time to go to bed. The next morning begins with the return of Coco, who has completed her mission and shown that she can be of service. Let's hope that the Empire did not get to her during her brief stay with them. After all, she will likely be the next one to be converted. For now though, we can construct her another bedroll, once again reduce some of Thoraya's resistance, and watch as our meat supply steadily increases. With four mouths to feed, Coco can now also once again take over cooking duties, hopefully without poisoning half the colony in the process, while Maniac mines out another slight extension to our shelter. Other than that, the day remains fairly uneventful, despite Coco steadily teetering on the edge of a mental breakdown, but for now she is holding it together. Just before bedtime then, we can catch a boar attempting to grab a snack from our animal stockpile, 
Admittedly, a not entirely unintended side effect of leaving the corpses out here, because hunting is made a lot easier if the animals come to us. A second boar follows shortly after, and again we are able to make quick work of it, just as Spex and Maniac are heading off to bed. In the middle of the night, we also see the arrival of a trade caravan, once again though a bit too large to attack them, so we need to keep things civilized. With everyone well rested on the next morning, Spex can engage the traders in conversation and sell off a few furs and leathers that are currently just taking up storage space. Unfortunately, we still don't have enough silver to purchase anything, and the caravan also doesn't really offer anything intriguing, so this small exchange is all there is. Or maybe not, as Maniac and Coco are able to hunt down yet another boar a short while later, and with two more of them eager to try their luck, our supply of fresh meat is growing quickly. After a few hours, five dead boar are surrounding our small shelter, and after rearranging some of our furniture, I think it is time to start butchering. This abundance now allows us to sell all of our elk meat for a small profit, increasing our funds to a respectable 188 silver. At this point, we can also construct ourselves an art bench for Coco, as she is a very talented artist and should see some joy from finally being able to live out her creative side. For the remainder of the evening, however, she can enjoy herself playing games, until a silver meteorite crashes down in the swamp and promises an unexpected increase to our colony's wealth. For now though, we'll leave it out there and instead have Maniac mine some of the silver that is much closer to our home. On the following morning, Thoraya still resists all recruitment attempts, but inside of our shelter, Coco has started work on a small wooden sculpture. And after a mostly unexciting day of pruning, cooking, research and unsuccessful prisoner recruiting, we can see that it is not just any sculpture, but instead a crafting of Cambia, a very special version of the sculpture that is unique to the Cult of Jinx, and is of course a small callback to that mysterious figure who once survived out in the cold all on his own, very much like our colonists are currently doing. The artwork itself also shows a settlement built near a hill, very fitting considering our current setup, but also a good description for the mountain base that was our home in the first series. On top of that, Coco's art skill of 10 resulted in a sculpture of excellent quality, enough to noticeably improve our shelter's impressiveness and beauty. For Spex and Maniac, the rest of the evening is then spent meditating, while Coco remains absent and focused on our research project. On the next morning, we can once again watch Spex have a chat with Thoraya, but for now our prisoner remains steadfast. I am pretty sure though that we will be able to recruit her in the next episode. For the rest of today, there isn't too much else going on, as we are focusing hard on finally getting complex clothing unlocked with Maniac, and of course the daily pruning work cannot be neglected either. In the late afternoon, Spex and Coco can then make use of our ability to not only chop down trees, but to actually dig them out and replant them, which allows us to clear some growing space that will definitely be needed once temperatures rise again. This is a neat way to get rid of trees without making our colonists suffer any mood penalties, and I think we might see it used much more frequently in the future, especially with the construction of a proper base getting closer. For today though, let us wrap up the episode with our research project almost completed, with Thoraya almost recruited, and with the next use of the anima tree for a psychic ability almost ready to go. That means the next episode, the first one of the new year by the way, promises to be an exciting one, but for today I think we have reached a good point to make the cut. And as we wrap things up with another showcase of fan arts, I want to take a moment here to say thank you. It is no secret that this series reaches by far the largest audience on the channel, so I think it is only appropriate to use these last few moments of this last video of 2021 to tell you how grateful I am for this community. Especially the last one and a half to two years have not always been easy, and I'm sure I'm not alone with that, but seeing the overwhelming positivity with which you guys respond to every video that I upload has made things a lot nicer for me. So thank you for getting hyped for the first episode of this series, thank you for your lovely comments under every single video that so often fill the gaps that RimWorld leaves to the imagination, 
And of course, also thank you to all the talented artists out there who have submitted fan art for this series. On YouTube, it is not easy to always make every series better or even just different than the last one, but I really feel that with your help we have done exactly that for this series right here. So thank you for another year that you have allowed me to entertain you. Here's to many more in the future. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.